Hey guys, my name is Maka. If you're new, welcome. Oh, welcome back to my channel if you're not new. And today I'll be sharing with you guys some tips or whatever you need to know before coming here as an international student. And here I mean in America. So these are just my experiences. They might not be the same with other people or other states. I'm not sure. And I'm specifically talking about my school. Um, that's Richland College. So yeah, the first thing that you need to know is... Um, you need to get a visa. The type of visa you're getting as an international student is an F1 visa. So, all these have restrictions. Um, all these uh, visas, well, this visa specifically, I don't know about other visas, but this student visa has restrictions like, um, well, okay, let me not talk about that right now, but the type of visa you're gonna get is an F1 visa. So this visa can be whatever, um, however or whatever time it takes for you to finish your course or I don't know, it just depends with whoever is giving you the visa or whatever. So yeah, so it can be five years, it can be 10 years, it can be two years, it can be six months. So it just depends. Um, also, what you need to know is you would rather go to college first, like the first two years, you'd rather, uh, when you do the basics, you'd rather um, do, go to college than uni because, uh, let me not even, girl, uni is very expensive and we all know that school is expensive, but for international students, School is expensive times three. That's times three, maybe even four, but times three. International students pay more than the regular um, students, like the residents or the citizens in America. So we pay three times what they pay. So let's take for instance, with college, and I'm talking about college, that's why I brought the college up. With college, a uh, course or oh, subject, I don't know, whatever you can call it, whatever you call it, a course will be, a course is about $100, $200, somewhere there, depending on if it's uh, just a basic course or an, a science course. So, sciences and math courses are more expensive, so they'll be like oh, 100 to 200 and the regular courses will just be like 100 Within, those are for residents, okay? Residents and citizens. With in international students, that same course that that person is paying uh, 200 for, you're gonna pay $600 for. So, we'll pay, you're paying three times what they're paying. So, that's college. And, University, I don't know about university, but I hear that's like all that. I'm even gonna start, that's a thousand dollars. That's so my advice is go to college for the first two years that you need to do your basics for. Because, uh, yeah, with school here, it's different, it's not like you just go right in and start your course let me say pharmacy like me you just don't start right there boom you start pharmacy no you don't you you have to eat actually when you come here they actually give you um some SATs I think SATs those are like exams then whenever you take the English math the, this is like the basic stuff that we did like in grade 12 or the 12th grade back home um yeah, so wh whenever you do that, if they decide w w with whatever um, scores you do, they have like what uh, what you need to get to like start college classes. If you don't, let me say, uh, get to that uh, mark, you they put you in um, ESOL classes. These ESOL classes are like basic under college classes so that's english they actually have level one level two level three and level four so level one is like 
you're just starting from square one like grade one English and whatever so <laughs> it's crazy if you don't do well on the SATs you're gonna start like from level one level two whichever they put you in and then after that you'll take like maybe a semester to do those and then the next two years you're gonna be doing the college classes these are English let's say microbiology well for me I'm gonna say for me I don't know what other people are taking with pharmacy you take uh, the English humanities math and these maths are like divided up right you say D math algebra trigonometry uh, pre-calculus calculus statistics so you have to do all those now let me tell you you can't do these at the same time so you're looking at five or oh, six semesters differently so that's how many years that's like three almost three years so you gotta do all that now let me tell you if you're doing all this stuff at the university that's money thousands of money that you're wasting on a semester that when you can actually take this course for six hundred dollars at a at the college than a thousand dollars at a university so do college then when you're done with the two years of the basic courses you can transfer to a university to do actually now do the course that or the major that you're supposed to do so either way even though you go to the uni you're still gonna do the basic courses it's 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 a must you just can't start your major right there without doing the basic courses so college then uni also scholarships are really like rare well for me i don't know about other people but they are really rare it's it's, it's so hard to like get scholarship you know so there's like lead to um clubs at school where you have to like do essays and then whoever wins for that week maybe gets like two thousand dollars or a thousand dollars that's what they do those are their scholarships which is i don't even understand there's so many people so yeah imagine there's like a hundred people doing writing that essay you gotta write it up good for you to get that and it's only one person that's gonna get it not two people know so imagine that that's trash to me <laughs> yeah so also, like I said, when you're an international student, you have so, like, there's so many restrictions. And these restrictions are, you have to take 12 credits each semester. What I mean by 12 credits is um, the basic classes, this is excluding science and math classes. These other classes are like three credits. Uh, the PE classes are one credit, these other classes are three credits, the math and the science classes are four credits. So let me say you're taking a math class, humanities, um, history, and a PE class, that's one, two, three, four, that's three, four, history, five, six, seven, that's three, four, humanities. And a science class, let's say microbiology, that's four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven. Okay, so that's eleven. You have to add one more class to this bundle to make it more than twelve. So yeah, you have to take more than twelve. Well, twelve and more. Let me not say more than twelve. So twelve and up. So you gotta look at the courses that you're gonna pick that um that semester and whatever then see if they add up to 12 credits you cannot take below 12 credits otherwise you lose your f1 status and you gotta go back home period they don't even play like they don't even play they want you to get 12 credits and up also you cannot drop a class whether you're failing that class you cannot drop it the only time you can drop a class is when you when you is like when you drop that class you still have 12 credits if you don't if you picked exactly 12 credits you cannot drop that class whether you're failing it whether you're not you gotta you will take the f 
you take it until the end of the semester and then you have to retake that class you cannot drop a class but every other person or the citizens or the residents can drop a class whenever they want to it doesn't show students no unless you have more than 12 credits isn't that crazy <laughs> also you cannot work the only place where you can work is school in school like on on campus you can work um the bookstore the library all those little departments you cannot work outside school because you're not a resident so imagine spending all that money and you're not working you're not making money so the money the only money you're receiving is from home and you guys know the dollar is high <laughs> our currencies back home are not that high so parents that are sending money from there to here which is literally nothing and you gotta get groceries you gotta get uh, you gotta pay for your tuition you gotta um, get clothes all that stuff you know do your hair it's it's crazy and you can't work so imagine how many students how many international students are in school that are looking for the same job that you are looking for the competition is crazy you end up not having a job that's why I did not have a job for like two years but after you graduate you can apply for OPT which is optional blah, 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 training whatever where you um, train for whatever course or major you blah, you just graduated for whatever then they give you a work permit like for a year and then yeah you can work outside school but even then you have to get a job that's in the same line as your major let me say with me pharmacy I cannot go and be a server at the restaurant um, or go and work at the cost center that's like a business um, company no I gotta do in the same line with my health with the health um, major that I signed up for imagine so it's crazy you gotta do things precisely and however they want you to do it because you can you can easily lose your um, F1 status and they don't even play about that. Also, with traveling, like traveling out of the United States, you can go without getting a signature from the school, like the International Student Advising, whatever place. Yeah, they have to sign your... Oh, yeah, so you, with, with the documents that you have, you have uh, a passport, right? A visa in the passport and um an i20 so you cannot travel without your i20 you cannot if you lose it that's it you're stuck let me say when you when i go back home and i lose my i20 at home i'm stuck back home i'm not coming back because i cannot travel i cannot go in or go out without the uh, the i20 so that's your traveling document they don't care about the fucking passport they don't care about the visa the I-20 is what they care about. So if you lose that, that's it. That's it. The good news, if you lose it here, you can go and they can give you a copy at school. But if you lose it back home, you're stuck. You are stuck. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the crazy part about, um, Oh, also, with if, if you're in college, right, let me say my my school does not offer um, housing or all that, so you gotta have an apartment by yourself, which is crazy expensive, so you have to have roommates. With me, I did not have a problem with that because my sister was already here, she, was, she had an apartment by herself, so I came and I just joined her, we were living together, so... That wasn't a problem for me but with let me say you are if you're new you don't know anybody here uh, you gotta look for a roommate and find an apartment together because um, the schools don't have housing with universities they do they are just expensive universities are expensive so I'd rather you go to college first graduate with an associates in whatever you're doing and then get a work payment 
work, save up money, and then transfer to a university. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Give me a sec. Can you even see me? Oh, yeah, so that's that. Um, if you have any more questions, I think that was the only thing I wanted to talk about. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Comment in the comment section and ask your questions. I'll reply to every questions. All the every questions. Every question. All the questions. And yeah, I'll try my best to reply to all of them. And yeah, so that's all I had. Those are the points that I wanted to talk about. Those are the things I wanted you guys to know before you actually came here for school. Because it's not that easy. It is not. Other people have it easy in other countries, but America, people, they are strict. Also, you gotta, before you come, you actually come here, with when, when giving you the visa, they actually ask you if you're going to stay. And say no, you're not going to stay. You're going to come. You're going to go back home after you're done with school. Because if you say yes, they will not give it to you. They don't want anybody to live in their country. So, they won't give you the visa, so you also have to sign that you're gonna go back home and yeah so that is it for this video you guys I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something I hope you understood whatever I had to share if you did not understand if you did not understand just again let me know comment in the section and I will reply to all the comments don't forget to subscribe if you're new Please, I'm hoping you stay and I'll be giving you guys more videos like this. And yeah, bye.